Hi, this is Lonyo, and I'm bringing you yet another game from Jungle Basin because I just kind of want to see it play out. And this time we've got a couple of Korean players, and we've got Freedom down here as the Green Protoss. And oops, sorry, not said to everyone. And we've got Captain up here as the Yellow Terran. And thankfully, despite the fact that we've got two Korean players here, they are both using nice, easy to say, easy to understand English names. So we've got Freedom and Captain. And I'm not quite sure what this is from. It's not a ladder game because we've got an observer in here who does have a Korean name. So I've got no clue who that is. Um, but I don't know. This is kind of. I feel it's quite nice for Terran versus Protoss in some ways because with this easy to take expansion back here, you can kind of understand that players might want to go for kind of at least a mid-game type play. Um, I mean, against with the Zerg, it's kind of a bit unfair against the Zerg, and they're kind of almost guaranteed to lose. But with Terran against Protoss, it has a chance to be a bit more interesting. So just got standard openings at the moment, supply depot just going up, and Chrono boosting out some probes. So obviously he's going quite econ heavy at the moment. He's going to get the 12 gate out. So, and we've got a barracks here just in a standard position. So we're not going to see any kind of funny proxy racks. We're not going to see any kind of reapers. Just standard timing and. There's no gas down at the moment, so it doesn't look like he's going to get an early gas. So he might be going for some kind of early marines, but not completely sure. It doesn't look like he's going to go for a particularly early factory, and yet he's getting a second back stand, so it looks like he's going to try and put on some early pressure with some marines. And we've got a gateway and just a pylon, and then it's similar coming down. So standard aiming from the Protoss and some marine pressure from the Terran, which can be pretty effective. Especially if the Protoss doesn't manage to force field very well, so I commentated the game on this map, which is also Terran versus Protoss, and he doesn't seem to be getting any kind of sell out at the moment, so he might be under a bit of pressure when he does scout these two barracks, so he'll see that in any second now. And yep, he sees both the barracks, so now he's going to probably start chrono boosting out a zealot. Or getting a zealot. I'm not. He does have some chrono boost, so he could chrono boost out the zealot. And this SUV is going to come down, see that the gateway's down, see that there aren't any zealot outs yet, see that the chrono boost isn't being used on that gateway. And at the moment, he's not getting out any other marines. So the second barracks isn't being used at the moment, even though he's got quite a lot of minerals, and he's not got any gas up yet. So I'm not quite sure exactly what he's doing. He's probably going to try and put a bunker down somewhere in a minute, although not at the moment. And he's just going to check for any expansion here. And obviously, you'll find that there isn't one. Oh, sorry. He is going to put down an expansion of his own. So, for some reason, he's got these two barracks. He's not producing particularly many marines, even though there's only one zealot out at the moment. So, not quite sure what his strategy was at the start. Maybe he was going a bit defensive. Maybe he was worried that the Protoss would try and put on some early pressure, and in fact, it wasn't. But still, it's a bit of a strange build in my mind that he decided to go for two racks not pump out too many marines and go for this fast expansion or fairly fast expansion and now he's finally getting a gas so he wasn't intending to go on any tech route so I'm not completely sure what this exactly was all about but now we've got warp gate technology researching off this one gateway and we've got a couple of stalkers, a couple of zealots out and our tech lab now coming down on one of these barracks so it looks like he's going to switch into kind of standard marine marauder type build, which is quite good against the stalkers. And another barracks going down, so he's going to have three barracks, and it looks like he's just going to possibly go for. Sorry, possibly going to just do a fairly defensive play at the front of his base while he gets his expansion up. And it looks like we might have an expansion now coming down from Freedom. So that's going to be slightly behind the expansion over here, which is just finished for Captain, and he's just started producing SCVs rather than getting an orbital command on that expansion and he's got his two gas up here and he's got the tech lab not yet researching anything because he doesn't have enough gas but it'll probably start stim, start stim fairly soon for those marines and marauders yep so stim's just begun and then he'll probably get another tech lab I'd say and possibly a reactor if he wants to go kind of two racks marauder one rack, one rack reactor marines and get the um, concussive shell out for the marauders so now we've got another tech lab going down and that'll probably get the concussive shell and they both got just standard supply depot and pylon just to check those back rocks if there's any funny business going on and we've got another gateway coming up and a robo and that's a nice scan just at the right time there from captain so he's going to see that robotics facility just going up now see that there's the three gateways so it's going to be three gate robo which is a fairly standard turn sorry fairly standard protoss opening against three racks 
Marine Marauder, so you'll probably want to get a and a model out fairly soon and then possibly try and get some Colossus out. We've got a factory now coming down so that might be to get a starpot down so you can support that Marine Marauder force with some medevacs and just go standard MMM against this Protoss. So they both got their expansions running now. Just pumping some drones, getting some more gas and at the moment Freedom's kind of got a few scouts out and about controlling those on our watchtowers but it's not going to do too much so far and all he's seen so far is just the two barracks so he's getting an observer out now so he can do a bit more scouting and we've got the combat shield upgrade coming up and he's not yet got the concussive shells so he's decided to go for the combat shield before concussive shells which is kind of interesting because it makes it slightly more difficult against the zealots because you can't really kite them you can't really catch them up as they try and run away so normally you might see the concussive shells before you get the combat shield upgrade and it looks like we've got pretty much pure a few sentries and zealot stalker army at the moment mainly zealots and only a couple of stalkers out and now he's getting the starport and the reactor on the factory and because of the timing of the reactor basically you can just switch out the factory with the starport just as the starport completes because the reactor takes about as much time to build as an entire building does so he'll be able to pump out two medevacs at a time from that starport and support his current by army pretty easily and now the observer's in the base and that'll see he's getting these other racks down so it's going to be five racks supported by a force with um, so sorry, with some medevacs and he's not yet getting any upgrades off this engineering bay but it is down so we'll be able to start getting some upgrades soon and yep now he's finishing the concussive shells so he didn't really need to get that quite so soon because it's already going to finish before he decides he's going to push out so it's just going to be now a robotic space so he can start getting out some colossus so he's not going to bother with any kind of immortal against these marauders since they're just kind of sat back in the base and he's going to have enough time to chrono boost out at least one colossus although at the moment he's not doing very well because he's just been supply cap but now finally he can start that colossus production so we've got a couple of medevacs out with this bio force and captain might want to start pushing out now just to try and get there before this colossus finishes so even though it's been chrono boosted yeah, no, it looks like Captain's just lost his window and he's going to have no chance of getting over there but before that Colossus completes, but still there's pro probably only going to be one out by the time he arrives. And at the moment he's doing fairly well keeping up with those mules. So he's just got 60 energy on the one command centre and not enough for a mule on the other. And now he's just checking out, seeing if there's anything going on. And if you just check his vision, he possibly seen the robotics facility and he scans now and now he sees that there's those Colossus out so he's going to start pushing forward. He might want to wait for uh, some more medevacs if he's producing any. Oh no, so he's gone for some Vikings to combat the Colossus which is always a sensible move although only one Viking isn't going to do a huge amount. Although there aren't too many Stalkers so if he starts getting a few more, oh sorry, looks like he is producing more Stalkers so they'll be able to combat those Vikings pretty well and keep that Colossus alive against the Bioforce. And it looks like he's going to load up some units, got a siege tank in here and some marauders so he might decide to try and put a bit of pressure down here get some of the army out of position it looks like Freedom's kind of anticipating that that might happen at some point in the future but especially with those observers which I think there might be one in the base somewhere so he's going to use these two vikings just kind of scatter about a bit check if anything's going on it looks like the observers are spotted that so he's got all these stalkers in position to take down these vikings if they do try and make a move to take down any probes and now we've got the dropship with a couple of tanks and four marauders in, so he's definitely going to try and push that over here and try and take down this Nexus as quickly as possible. But with those observers spying, he's not really going to have too much success, and it might be. But he loses a lot of this force if he just tried to push too far forward, although with these siege tanks sieging up over here, they can kind of take advantage of the gap and spot with the Vikings, so he's going to be able to do quite a bit of damage. I did completely forget about the fact that you can just siege these tanks up here, but with the thermal land range upgrade over here, he's able to take down these two siege tanks really, really quickly. And wow, this fish is going to do pretty much nothing. So it's just the four marauders now left, and he's going to take down his own rock so he can get out there and start doing some damage over his captain. He's just going to run away. So he's got no chance against this war. So he's just going to hold up and wait, go back to his base. So those tanks did almost nothing. They might have got a couple of probes, maybe, or done some damage to some of the shields of these units. But apart from this one zealot, which is down to 61 health, really not a whole lot achieved, and he lost both of those tanks. So not a very good move there. It's a nice idea but with those observers just kind of all around the map being able to spot everything 
he knew exactly what was coming and he knew exactly how to deal with it just with those range upgraded colossi. So nice play there, and he's getting some more colossi out. Potentially because there's a heavy bio force, and it looks like we're going to see this pushing out now. And he's just got that observer there sat right on top of the army, able to see exactly what's going on. And Captain's pretty far behind on the harvest account. I mean, even though he's got those mules, he's still not going to be able to make up all that difference in the income. He's not using his mules very effectively. So at the moment, Freedom's got the economic advantage, and it'll be interesting to see if either player decides to try and expand. So Freedom might try and expand over here now that he's opened up those back rocks. Because obviously, it's a bit harder to take this expansion over here. 